Hello friends, today's video is going to be another quick one. I recently got hold of the Hot 42 S16 and T16, thanks to Huawei on Amazon for sending these over. They gave me no instructions, so opinions are my own. And the thing that surprised me immediately when first handling these is how good they feel. I went from the G series straight to the R and M+. So I never got to find out firsthand why the S and T series is still so popular. In my mind, the R model seemed like a decent upgrade to the T series. But after unpacking them, the advantages were very clear. So today I just want to briefly go over the similarities between these two and then how they differ from the other controllers in the lineup. So hopefully you get a sense for which hot controller is right for you. If you found yourself here by accident and you don't know what you're looking at, these are arcade controllers designed primarily for fighting games. They're also a good choice for a popular music game called Osu on the PC. Instead of the traditional stick controls, we have direction buttons intended for accuracy. They're compatible with pretty much everything, but the PS5 and Series X will require the purchase of dongles. You can watch some of my other Levelist videos for more information. The S and the T series are pretty much the same controller with the only difference being size. The buttons feel the same, but we've got smaller buttons on the S to accommodate the smaller size and they protrude from the controller at the same height. Both of these models have a thick top layer to keep the buttons at a low profile. That makes them both great for sliding. On my slidometer scale, it sits above the R series and very close to the M+. The S is 196 by 125 millimeters, whilst the T is 296 by 196 millimeters. The T would be much better for lap play and both would be fine for tabletop play. The S is small enough for travel but isn't good for lap play in my opinion because I always have to keep my legs closed to provide a base for it. There are extenders available to buy like the one by Cheatbox or Poltato. I will be reviewing the Poltato one soon so click the subscribe button if you want to be reminded for that. They're both fitted with Kale low profile red switches and these can be easily swapped out with other Kale Choc V2 switches. For example, here I have the Crystal Switch, which is a collab between Hot 42 and Kale. This is installed already in the T16C, but I have the T16 standard, that's why these have the reds. This is another collab between Hot and Kale. It's the wind engines, which sound and feel amazing in every controller I've used them with, so I highly recommend this one. The only thing you have to remember is that they are not transparent like the crystals, so they will block some of the LED lights on the controller. This is the Kale Low Free Wizard and it's a clicky switch. This also comes in linear and tactile variants which I haven't tried, but here they are good too. Links for all of these switches are below. So that's the S&T series. Personally, I like larger controllers, so of the two I prefer the T, but that's not to say the S isn't a good choice too. Let's bring in the G and talk about this for a bit. So the form factor is pretty much the same. The screens are in different locations, which isn't a big deal. The main difference here to pay attention to are the button caps and switches. The diameter of the caps are smaller on the G and along with the standard MX switches that the G series uses, this makes it impossible to use the slide technique because they come up very high. If you flick your buttons, the higher caps will also be a problem because they run the risk of falling off. It goes without saying that if you don't use the slide technique and you don't flick, these things won't be issues for you. A lot of players would still prefer the G series because they like the height and variety of MX switches already out there. Now the T series. I just want to quickly mention the M plus here because the button size and spacing is very similar. The big difference to note is the premium aluminium chassis on the M and the fact that art mods will have to be stuck on top uh, with the M model. This also comes in a smaller size which I don't have so I can't tell you much about that one. The bigger difference is to look out for when it comes to the T series is when we put it side by side with the R series. With the R the spacing is tighter so if you have smaller hands you won't need to stretch your fingers as much. Also this button is now over here on the R series. This is a matter of preference. It also comes with rims. These rims add a nice aesthetic to the controller, but they don't make sliding movements easier. The buttons sit quite high because the top plate is a lot thinner than the top plate on the T-Series. So your fingers will get snagged if you try to slide. So you'd have to adjust your technique to slide with the joint of your finger. 
If you are a slide player, the bottom line is to go for the T model. And if you like a tighter button layout, go for the R series. Now the U series on the other hand, this is their latest model, it only came out in late September. It has the rims from the R, but these ones are not transparent, and the button spacing from the T. But it has a top plate that is much easier to remove with the included screw. It's also lighter than these two models and it has a plastic chassis. So I hope I've made it quite obvious that the new models don't replace any of the old models. They all have enough differences to warrant your consideration and you should choose the model based on your needs. So to sum it all up, if you want to slide, go for the M+, the T and the S. If you want nice looking rims, a pinky button and smaller spacing, go for the R. If wide spacing, rims, a lighter body and the easiest art modding process sounds good, then go for the U. And finally, if you want MX switches, go for the G. All links are below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and I'll see you on the next one.